Welcome to our tips and tricks video for Smart Connect with Dynamics Nav. We're going to be focusing on the technical aspects of any integration for either sending data into or pulling it out of Dynamics Nav. And we're going to be focused on the functionality or the features that you can enable within Smart Connect, within Dynamics Nav, or within your system in general to try to make your lives a little bit easier when you're designing these solutions. We have a wide range of topics that we're going to be covering today, and we're going to be jumping through them just one after the other and how it can apply to your environment. So the content that we're going to be going through is the first topic is going to be focused on the actual Dynamics Nav services in general, how to enable them, how to publish them. Uh, we're going to show off a free extension that we have to make your lives easier when you're publishing those extensions within Nav. And then we're going to switch over to Smart Connect and show the setup for the actual Dynamics Nav connector to ensure that you have that configured properly. After those two general topics are done, we're going to focus a little bit on the data source of a integration that we're connecting to Dynamics Nav. And that's going to be focused on the last modified date that exists within the Nav services, and then also the multi-data source feature that we have within Smart Connect. For the destination, we're going to be looking at the key field lookups and then also the page field lookups. And then we're going to be looking at this is specified flag that exists within any of the field mappings that we do when Dynamics Nav is our destination. So let's get started by talking about the different web services that are available within Dynamics Nav. The very first thing we want to make sure is enabled is the SOAP and OData services are actually turned on. In the majority of the cases, the setup for this should already be completed, but if it hasn't been, you're going to want to be opening up the administrative console for Dynamics Nav and looking at both the SOAP and the OData services. When we expand one of these categories, you want to make sure that that Enable SOAP Services checkbox is marked for each of these, as those are going to be the services that Smart Connect works with when we're integrating data into Nav or pulling data out of the system. As long as that is set up correctly, the next thing we want to look at is Dynamics Nav itself. So when we're looking at integrating into Nav or pulling data out of it, we want to make sure that we have the correct page services published in order for us to go ahead and integrate to any particular record type within Nav. For example, if I open up my item window, I can go ahead and open a specific item, and I want to make sure that I know how to integrate to this card. So on any window within Dynamics Nav, there's a help screen where we can look at about this page, and we can find out the information for that window we're looking at. We can find this page label with an ID on it. This is the actual page service. And then we can also find the source table that we integrate with. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this first field, this page service and the ID of 30. So we can do this for any window in Nav, um, and it's going to go ahead and show us the correct ID that we need. In this case, we're going to save this 30 ID as we're going to use it when we add a new service into our Dynamics Nav system. So let's go ahead and open up our expected window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for our web service list. And this is where Dynamics Nav will show all the currently published web services. And this is important because Smart Connect is only going to be interacting with our published services that we have within the system. So you can see we've got quite a few services that are already published. We're going to be focusing on the page services today, as that's what we can use for both the data source and a destination. So you can see that the item card is actually already added into the list. So technically, I don't have to do anything at this point. However, if I wanted to, and we could do this with a new service, we would click Home and New, and we would add a new service into our list. So I would select Page from the list. I would pick my ID from the window that I had open. In this case, it's 30. It's going to pull back my item card object name. And then we can name this whatever we want. So I can name this demo item card. And it's going to publish this as a new service, even though I already had one existing. And now I can interact with either one of those. Now, we're going to want to do that with any of the different windows and object types that we want to integrate with um, and get that full list uh, within Dynamics Nav for us to go ahead and, and integrate to. So what we've done at E1 Solutions is we've developed a free extension called our E1 Service Publisher. So I'm actually going to open up our Service Publisher. And that's going to perform the same functionality as that web service window. It just is going to give us an easier interface to go ahead and publish these services from. So on the current web service window, it's difficult to find the correct service to add into the list and publish. 
It doesn't give you a full list right on the interface. You have to open it up through a lookup window. So by using this, we can go ahead and speed up the process and make sure we are working with the correct services when we publish them. For example, if I want to look at all my item cards, I just need to go ahead and search for item, make sure it's searching on item object name, click search on here, and now I can see all the different item related services. So we've got our item card, I could publish that again if I wanted, we'd actually just have copies of that service at this point. And I could also go through and publish any of the other records that I'm going to have to be working with. So I want to make sure that I get all the needed item services so I can interact with those using Smart Connect. So as we're clicking the publish button on this window, behind the scenes it's going ahead and publishing these automatically and these aren't all ready to be used with Smart Connect. If we go back to that default web service window inside of Dynamic Snap, we'll see those as well and we could turn them on or off from that window at this point. So we've looked at enabling the services, publishing them through either the default window or using the E1 service publisher. Let's look at Smart Connect now and how we connect to that and then also the data source and destination features once we have our connector set up. So within Smart Connect, we're going to be looking at the main setup window and we're going to be looking at our Dynamics Nav connector. When we open this window up, as you can see, we get our authentication type. We want that set to Dynamics Nav. And then for the service URL, you want the URL that would be based on any of the web services that exist within Dynamics Nav that have been published. If you open up any one of those page services, we can go ahead and see that the base URL remains the same up to the WS, which stands for web service. That's the base URL path that we're going to be putting in the service URL for the setup window. After that is set, we want to make sure we get a correct user entered into this connector window. And we can use the same user for both the system service and the map run section. What you'll want to ensure is that the user you choose from Dynamics Nav has enough rights to go ahead and access those published services. So we can either push data in or pull data out of Dynamics Nav. So once you set the username and password and domain if needed, you'll want to ensure that you set the default company to one of the available options. We're going to choose Kronos USA for this company and save the connector. If that's set up and saved correctly, we can now set up different integrations to either pull data from Dynamics Nav or send data back into it. For our final topics, we're going to create a new integration or a new map. We'll just call this Tips and Tricks. And we're going to start off by looking at the data source options when we're pulling data out. So when I select Dynamics Nav for my data source type, I then get to choose what company I want to pull this data from. And based on the company we choose, we're going to see the published services within that company as well. So if I open this up, I can go ahead and filter down on item. And you can see that both my, my E1 items came through, and then also the demo item that I named earlier. So I could choose any one of these that I wanted to pull the data from. Once that's chosen, the one field that I want to highlight on this filter fields is this last date modified. So there are many services within Dynamics Nav that have last date modified as an optional field that you can filter on. Now one of the most useful things with last date modified is that the criteria you set here doesn't have to be a static value. We don't have to set this to equals you know, 430 2018 because that would only work if I want to pull customers only from this day and this day only. Instead, we can set this to a relative term, like the term now, and we can ensure that if we set it in this manner, it's always going to pull data just from the current day that this integration is running. So if you only want records that have been modified on a specific day, we can go ahead and filter this criteria, make it relative, and set up either criteria that would look at the current day or anything greater than equal to yesterday or any of the other um, relative based commands that we can enter into here. Expanding on the options that we have in our data source window, we can go ahead and make use of a multi data source. So if you've watched our other videos related to Dynamics Nav, a lot of the time we've had an integration open that's had a multi data source set as the type. So I see two common scenarios with the multi data source. One is to join data together across different systems. So when we set up a multi-data source, what it allows you to do is to pull data from any one of our bulk data source types. So we could pull data from both a text file and Dynamics Nav, or we could do Dynamics Nav 
a REST service from a cloud-based application, we could go ahead and connect to our SQL Server, etc. It doesn't matter what the combination is. We're able to go ahead and add in as many data source types as we want into this one window, and then we can go ahead and join those records together based within Smart Connect. This removes the need from a staging table. It can remove needs for extra steps in terms of making sure all of your data is in one place before you integrate it to your final system. This also works if you just want to set up multiple queries to Dynamics Nav. So if you want to pull data from more than one web service uh, within Dynamics Nav, you can use the multi-data source, set each one of these services up within here, and then join them as needed, just as if you were pulling data from you know, different systems. The other use that we see for the multi-data source is to compare data between two systems. So if you want to compare data between your Dynamics Nav system and say your Dynamics CRM system, you may want to pull all customers from Nav that do not exist within CRM yet, or vice versa. And in that regard, we can still set up our multiple data sources on the link data source window here, except when we join them together, we do a join where we say the records do not exist in one system, but they do in the other. And in that case, it can filter down our data to just the records we want to work with. Now let's look at the destination within Smart Connect and how it relates to Dynamics Nav. We've got two tips that we want to go through in this section. So I've set the customer card as my service. This could be any other service that you've published within Dynamics Nav. What we're going to go through applies to any Dynamics Nav destination endpoint. But let's open up the customer card and take a look at the destination parameters on the right hand side. A lot of the fields that are listed within the destination have a specified field that's attached to them. So we'll see a name like credit limit, LCY, and then we'll see the specified field that is just below it. What the Dynamics Nav service is looking for is an actual flag on whether or not the value is being passed in, which is why the specified fields are attached to a lot of the standard fields that we have in the list. So if I go ahead and say I want a credit limit of $10,000, I just put a constant in there of 10,000. What I'm also going to want to do is make sure that I set the specified field to true. So our column type is set to list, so all we need to do is a drop down and set that to true. Now that's going to apply if I use a constant for this field, or if I map a source column or any other additional column to credit limit LCY in this case. So that same idea should apply to any of the other fields that you can see we have a specified flag attached to. If you map value to that main that main parameter, you're going to want to make sure that the specified field is flagged accordingly. Now the other tip that I want to run through is under the additional columns within Smart Connect. We have two unique column types specific to Dynamics Nav, uh, which would be the page field lookup and the page key lookup. And they're very similar in how they function, and what they allow you to do is query any of the published page services within Dynamics Nav, and then pass in your criteria and pull back values based on that criteria you passed in. If you're doing a key lookup, it's only going to return the key value for that record that matches their criteria. If you're doing a page field lookup, it's going to let you pull back any of the field that you any of the fields that you want off of that service based on the criteria. For example, let's open up our service here. So I'm just going to call this test service for the name. On an actual integration, you're going to name this something a bit more specific. But if I want to find some more information on, say, my item records. Or let's say I want to find more information on a contact record that I believe should be attached to the customers that I'm importing in. I can pull back my contact card service. My return value, since we're doing a field lookup instead of a key lookup, I can go ahead and specify any particular I value I want to pull back from here. So I may want to go ahead and figure out what the actual salesperson code is for the contact attached to this customer. And then I can go ahead and apply my filter fields and make sure that I'm matching this up the way I expect it to. So in my case, I believe my number field for my data source and my destination should match up. So if this is set correctly and my criteria ends up matching, it's going to return the salesperson code for the contact that it finds on that service. Now we can do this off of any published service that we have in the system. And then we can go ahead and pull back any particular return value off of that service that we choose. The page key lookup functions in a very similar manner, except you'll notice that there isn't a drop down for choosing the field you want to return, because in that case we're always returning the key value for use within our integration. So that's it for our tips and tricks video on Dynamics Nav. I hope you found some useful content from this video. If you're interested in looking at Smart Connect 
a bit further, we do have a 30-day trial that you can request from our Smart Connect overview page at e1solutions.com, or you can go ahead and speak with one of our team members at sales at e1solutions.com. To learn more about Smart Connect, go to e1solutions.com, where you can take a product tour, see a demo, and start your free 30-day trial.